What's up? I'm the Zim. And this is the Zim's video journal episode 113. Thanks for joining. This is where I talk about everything that went down on my musical and artistic journey in the last week. I feel that there's a lot to talk about and hopefully I'll not go too long. If I go over like 20 minutes, it stops playing and I don't like it when that happens. So let's just get rolling. Um, I forgot to mention last week that on uh, the video journal I was going to talk about because I mentioned on the end of the podcast I was going to talk about something on the video journal and that was this idea of playing for exposure and oh geez I could probably take a whole 20 minutes just talking about that idea because last week or two weeks ago or whatever on my Facebook page I on through Facebook the conversation about don't take gigs for exposure came up and there's a Obviously, it's a very polarizing idea. So I, in one of the places was Bite of the Seattle, I guess. Bite of Seattle in Seattle, Washington is an event that happens on Seattle Center Grounds. And they don't pay their music, any musicians that play their event, supposedly. I guess a few people have gotten paid, but they have to finagle it. But um, in general, they don't pay musicians because it's an exposure gig. And it's a really tough one to draw the line at because you actually are getting exposure. There's a lot of gigs out there like playing for exposure gigs where they, nobody shows up and there is no exposure. But there are some gigs where you actually do get exposure. And just, there's a lot of philosophies on it. I'm just going to leave it. And maybe at some other time, I'll go into this deeper. But, um, and if you want me to, let me know. But basically, my bottom line is the market for what's going on in the music business right now is changing constantly. It's not... Ever, it's 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 never been what it used to be because even when it was what it was it was it was always changing it's always changing and right now the bottom line is you got to hustle your ass off to make anything happen you have to be doing so much so so much especially if you're not some phenom type of musician like where you just do one thing and everybody just starts drooling over you but even those people even some of the people that we see as just gifted still had to hustle, still had to make something work, either by practicing their craft or by doing something. But you gotta be hustling. And if you and there's just so many of us mediocre musicians out there that you have to find ways to leverage what you do to make more for what you are. And so I'm all about like if you get a genuine playing for exposure gig, take it and kick its ass. You know, have merch on point. Actually promote it. Get people there. I think a lot of people too many musicians, and I'm going through this right now, I'm, I'm a part of an event that's coming up that nobody seems to be promoting and it's just making me crazy. It's like, just because it's a bigger event, don't stop promoting it. Don't treat it like it's the, the most important thing you've played. You know, every show should be your most important show and every show you should be promoting as hard as you possibly can. And if you're saying to yourself, oh, it's not as important or I don't need to promote, you got to check yourself right there because that's when you need to say, well, do you even want to be doing this? Because that's what it means to create anything is to keep hustling and promoting and pushing every single thing you're doing. That's my way of thinking about it. And when it comes to playing for exposure, if it's a genuinely honest playing for exposure gig, take it and kick its ass. Like I said, have your merch ready. Tell everybody you know to be there. Make it so that everybody else had that didn't know who you were all of a sudden goes, why are there so many people so excited for this band? I should be excited for this band too. Because that's what the general public wants. The general public wants to get excited about what other people are excited about. Just the way it works. So, remember that. I don't know. Ask me if you want to know more of my thoughts about that. Or you could go to my Facebook page if you're friends with me on personal Facebook page and just go down a ways. It's, you know, a couple of weeks ago now. And it was a big, long thing. And I posted a whole bunch of thoughts about that but my thoughts on it, but there was a lot of people that enjoyed the conversation. And for the most part, it stayed pretty civil. There was one guy that like had to post on every single post. Cause he was, he was on that side of don't play for exposure and like really hardcore zealot about it. And it's like, geez guy, you know, uh, maybe if you spent a little more time on your music and not on this post, more shit would be happening for you. But that's what I was, I don't know. Anyway, so let's roll into word on the street. We did episode or version 88 last week with a couple of members of the General Mojos, Heather Thomas and um, Dune Butler. Great, great. I actually wrote down some things this week. 
wasn't a ton of things, but a few things I wrote down. Pronunciation of their name. I kept saying it wrong, even though I figured out how to say it right, and it was just kind of funny, I thought. And then it was one of those ones, like, listening back to the conversation, like, my self-conscious aspect of it, this, I'm definitely feeling the reality of the imposter syndrome set, settling into what I'm doing because at times I feel really confident about what I'm doing and at times I'm like, I'm an idiot. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing and and I don't know if anybody cares and, and all this kind of stuff. And it just, it's like, and it's a typical thing. It's a typical feeling that a lot of us that are creators get. I hear it all the time in other podcasts and other interviews I, I listen to. So I just got to remember that it's not an abnormal thing to feel, a way to feel, but like it hit me a little harder, like with the whole possessive, you know, general mo- mojo's apostrophe s is a possessive way, of, and they, I said it's a more than one, a plural way of saying, it. and it's like that's where my weakness is in grammar and that kind of stuff, my dyslexia, and it's never been a strong point for me. My brain just does not retain those types of things as well as some other people do, so that's just something about me and and so in whenever a moment like that happens it it, it expands and it enlarges this feeling of this imposter syndrome feeling the, I, I don't know i wrote down just want you to have it something in the conversation i can't remember why i don't know why i'm even talking about it now because i can't remember what it was but in the conversation they must have said just want you to have it and i can't remember why so listen back and maybe you can tell me why i did that um but a little behind the scenes thing Notice that the sound of the recording sounds a little more hollow and roomy, and I think it's because my the closet studio used to be my bedroom as well, and I had my bed in there, and so I think the bed would absorb a lot of sound. Where now it, there's no real sound absorbing thing, so I think I need to get baffles in here for when there's people when we're recording a podcast because so it takes up some of that room sound. Um, but yeah, so there's that. I got to work on that. So this weekend, I'm recording this video journal on Saturday, which normally I do them on Sunday, but I figured I'll do it on Saturday just to get out of the way because my hot Saturday just totally got blown up because I started recording the Zim and A-Rock music and I got my neighbor right over there, started banging on the wall and I was like, oh God, I thought they weren't home. Like my downstairs neighbor's not home right now. At least their cars aren't here. And I thought her car wasn't here either. And when I looked outside, but maybe she came home. She worked some weird schedule, and I think she sleeps during the day and stuff. So, so now I'm I kind of put everything away, and I'm going to where we rehearse to record. But the only bummer is like the it's not it's not set up for recording, and I'm just gonna have to do the best I can because I'm not gonna bring these guys with me when. When A Rock and I record the drums, that's where we record the drums. We usually set aside a week in and then I'll bring those with us and just kind of. But since it's just like all I'm going to need to do is record guitar, I'm not going to bring those and just kind of cross my fingers that it'll work. There's some like PA speakers there that I'll try to use as reference monitors as well. So, but it kind of just totally deflated my day and I was just really bummed because. I was, I don't know, it just sucked. Just, to, you know, got me thinking more about the frustration of my life situation than, you know, it kind of killed my motivation to do stuff. So, like, I'm just, I'm just going to, tomorrow's Sunday, I'm going to go over there and set up and try to get some tracks recorded and see what happens. But, um, but yeah, so, because our record, our, our um, rehearsal situation is a little different than, I mean, like, you're probably thinking, well, that's an awesome place, but it's like we rehearse in our friend's basement um, because of their generosity, and it's only a couple times a week that we do it, and it doesn't take up, and I don't want to feel like a burden, like going over there a lot to do things. Like, I mean, if it was a space that was just a space, and, you know, then I would. I'd probably set up the recording stuff there and just have it be the space I go, but because it's like someone else's space, and I, it's just not quite as comfortable as I'd like it to be. So it's just, it's what I gotta do, and it's just the struggle of being an independent DIY musician, an artist, is you just have to make it work with, use what you, know what's the saying? Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can, and it's totally one of those things where it's, that's 
what I have to use, so I'm going to do what I can with it. Um, I wanted to mention as well, so last night I went to a show. I went to see, I went to see Mother of Pearl, um, Furniture Girls, and Vis, Vis Queen, not Vis Queen, um, Wiscon were on a bill at the high dive, and it was so good, so good, so good. I, I highly recommend all three of those bands go check out. It was a little bit, I think Wiscon was the odd man out on the lineup. I really loved it, but I think Mother of Pearl and Furniture Girls kind of fit together better. But um, but Wiscon, I, they were all amazing, and I think you should you should know all three bands and be supportive of all three bands if you're a fan of supporting local music. Which got me thinking about another topic, because even how last night played out was we have a lot of people in the scene that are willing to support their friends, but they're not willing to support local music, local original music. They're willing to support their friends that play local original music, but they're not willing to support the big picture of local original music. Because so many times, I mean, more often than not, pretty much every time I go to a show, people only go for the one band on the lineup that their friends are in. They don't go to see the whole show. And I posted on my Facebook today that I think this is a problem. I don't like it. It really makes me sad to see that because it's like we all need support. I mean, you're already out. You're already out. What it? What is one more hour? What I mean, it's just on both ends. Like, you're already out. What's the big deal? Why can't you stay and expose yourself to something else? Why is it so hard to, to do that? You stay for the 40 minutes your one friend's band plays, and then you leave. It's like, why is it? Why can't you just stay for the whole show and make it a part of, make that the event, make that the thing you do? I don't know. I don't understand. I'm trying to live into that idea. And I want, you know, I hope, and of course, I like it when, you know, I don't want to belittle or alienate anybody that would come see the Zim and A-Rock if they only want to come see the Zim and A-Rock. But it's like, I hope that whoever is coming to see my band will have that philosophy and go, well, they're playing second or third or first or whatever. I'll go and I'll stay and I'll be a part of the event with everybody else and just expose myself to something new, you know, and you don't have to like it. But I know it's hard to do. I know it's very hard to do because I'm in this situation with I am with Word on the Street, with just where I am in my life and what I'm realizing about people, artists. It's like I'm willing to... I seem to find greater enjoyment in what's going on on stage and whatnot, even if I don't like it, because I'm looking at it through the lens of this person. These guys are expressing their art the way that they want to, the way they, they believe they need to do it. And it, that, for me, goes, I go, yes, that's amazing. And I like that. And so it opens me up to more hearing music in a new and different way, and I hear it as an expression, like... I just look at it through the lens of they're trying to tell us they're an emotional state through their the way they move on stage and what they the sounds they're making is they're trying to convey an emotion and I just let myself go like what is there what are they trying to tell me and when I do that it opens up it makes it more than whether or not I like it or not it goes like well they're 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 expressing and, and trying to tell me something and I'm hearing it and it and on it's just different and I I know not everybody can do that people just go on and off yes no you know they like it or they don't they don't look deeper into it most of the time so i'm encouraging you to hopefully look deeper into it stay at shows longer go to the whole show whenever your friends are playing a show there's going to be two other bands most likely playing if you're in the this i'm talking about a local original music this is what we do if you're going to see your friend that's going to play all night at a venue that's a whole different thing background music that's a whole different thing i'm talking about these original lineups at high dives nectars you know tractor tavern sunset you know what all of those types of places you know these these kind of lineups stay for the whole substation you know places like that go for the whole show think about it if i could change anything about the culture talk about culture of the seattle music scene that is a big part of the culture and i'm it may be the same everywhere else but seattle it's like that for sure seattle only goes for the their friends band that's it 
we are so closed off to exposing ourselves to anything new. It's like people that I've mentioned this before the Seattle freeze last week, I think is what it was. The title of my thing, Seattle freeze is real. And this is a very clear indication that it is real. This, this is what the Seattle freeze is part of it in one way. We only, we stay closed off to exposure of new things. We don't open up and go, well, I might discover something new. I'll, I'll listen to, I'll take an idea in. But anyways, Let's see, what else do I got? I wrote down my stuff really chicken scratchy, so um, so Brody Nation, we're playing, the Zim and Eric are playing July 23rd at Brody Nation. This last week, I'll put the link in, uh, yeah, I'll put the link in the description of this video. We made a hashtag running man challenge video for the Brody Nation bands to challenge back. So far, nobody has, and I'm, I'm curious to see if anybody will. I'm trying to Obviously, trying to do something with social media, creating excitement for a show. That's what I'm trying to do. Hopefully, people will get involved with it. I, Judging from what the response is so far, nobody's going to. But we'll see. Um, I guess on faith... So, the, so one, two things about the hashtag Running Man, Running Man Challenge is the Running Man that they do in the challenge is different than the running man that we, that I grew up with, with like Bobby Brown and stuff. That's a different running man. For whatever reason, the kids that started this thing, I looked it up online. Um, they were on Ellen and all that stuff. They, maybe they didn't know there was already a dance called the running man. Um, and they made up their own running man. So that's, that's that. And I think I've gotten one response on the video saying there's no running man in the video. And it's like, yeah, you're right. The old running man, but the new running man is different. So that's one thing. Um, another thing. So come out to the show, July twenty third, Brody Nation. The link will the to the event page will be in the description of this video. Love you to do that. And then, last two things I'll mention is I've started doing. I'm I'm been post. I'm I'm really getting into this YouTube kind of thing and trying to figure out what I can post that's easy and can you know that I can do quickly and just keep this idea of YouTube going, I like it. I mean, nobody's really watching anything that I do for all intents and purposes, which brings me to another idea that bummed me out this week. What Like yesterday night, so going back to the podcast, every day I check the podcast and for whatever reason, this time, you know, nobody downloaded a podcast yesterday. Nobody listened to the podcast yesterday according to my stat tracker thing. And it's just like, what the heck? There's billions of people in the world and not one of them wanted to listen to my podcast ah i don't know i don't know i don't know it just got me kind of frustrated and but that just tied into this how getting people to i mean i realized there's this idea of if you make something and people don't want if people don't react to it that might mean probably means it's no good and it's like, is what I'm creating, is what I'm doing, is everything I'm doing, is the podcast, is these video journals, is everything I do on my YouTube page, no good? Am I just, is it just no good? And it's really self, the self-doubt in this, all, this whole process is really hard to process, actually, because it's, I like doing it. And I want it, I do it to get a react, I do it for, to put it out there for the reaction, but I... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't want to go too far down a self-pity road, but it it's it's interesting. Just put it that way. It's later that. What I started doing though, back to this whole thing with YouTube and wanting to do more with it, is I started doing a 5-minute video, 5-minute or less videos and whatever topic is comes every day there seems to be something I can put up that's five minutes or less about a topic, about something that came up within that day. And so that's what I'm doing, it'd be five minutes or less. Part of the idea is to try to try to um, leverage it with current topics a little bit more, the like general current topics in the world and try to talk about them and try to get more people filtered through my YouTube page and things. But um, we'll see how it goes. But it, it's another way to journal. Like you saw a couple weeks ago, I tried to do daily journals where I edited it all, but it doesn't work out as much easier clearly much easier just to sit in front of the camera and talk. And I like to talk, so that's what I'm gonna do. I feel like I'm gonna run out of time real soon, so I'm gonna le wrap it up. But um, before we end, tell me what your jam is. This week, 
So last week I mentioned it was Don't Feed the Birds by General Mojo's, which I didn't tell you the name of, but now that it's out, it was on the last podcast. I'm still jamming on that pretty hard. Um, I also, it's the Suzy Sun and Go Periscope remix. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick before the thing ends. Um, I'm really jamming on that one too. It's pretty awesome. I was... I, sh- I could have mentioned that before. Any Other Way by Suzy Sun, the Go Periscope remix. Really awesome. Check that out. Um, let me know what you're jamming on. All right. Thanks a lot. Put it in the description. Put it in the comments. Let me know. Let's let's interact here. And let me know if there's any you have any questions for me. I'll, I'll be happy to design these in the way that you like them, too. Um, peace. The Zim, the Zim Video Journal, episode 113. Thanks for joining, and we'll catch you next week. Peace out, yo.